First thing we need to do, uh, call a meeting to order, whatever time it is, 5.30. First thing we need to do is approve minutes. Do you have the dates in front of you, Darius? I don't. Yep. All right, the uh, first thing we to call uh, approve the minutes of February 9th, 2021 was the last time this subcommittee got together. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. And a second? Second. All those in favor, just wave. Be happy. <laughs> we don't have a roll. Do we have to take a roll call for four people? Um, Good question, huh? If someone wants to fight over the fact you guys approved the minutes from a year ago, yeah. as an improper vote, they could do that. Yeah, bring it on. If they want to, let's have it. <laughs> on a budget that we're already halfway through. <clears throat> okay, now we'll proceed on to the main the main event. Jelly has all kinds of good things to tell us. All kinds of good things. Um, I'm going to share my screen so that you guys can see the document. I did send it out to you, but we'll just go over it and look at it together. All right, so uh, you're all veterans here with budget building, but in case anyone was watching us, <laughs> just to give input on how the budget is built, uh, we start with the level service approach, meaning we take all uh, current staffing and programs and replicate them for the next year. Uh, we look at existing expenses and a prior year spending history and make adjustments where needed. We also look at contractual and non-contractual wage adjustments for all of our staff. Uh, and then we consider key uh, priorities and new initiatives that might be coming up in the new year. Uh, so for Frontier, the first draft for next year with all that taken into consideration is starting off at 5.72%. Uh, for a total general fund of just shy of 2.5 million. Um, we'll use about another 900,000 to fully fund the budget. That's uh, revolving funds and grant monies. So the big question here is where is that 5.72% increase coming from? It's a lot of things taken into consideration here when we build this. Uh, one of the new initiatives or new needs I should say for the school is to add a high school English teacher that's adding a $63,000 salary increase to the budget. Uh, we are looking for an increase of 23,000 roughly for an additional instructional assistant. And one other new position, a $21,000 increase to add an additional building monitor. Uh, that position helps with key transitions such as um, movement to lunch, arrival and dismissal, uh, and those kinds of pieces. So those are three new initiatives in this budget increase that we're talking about today. We're also seeing a $40,000 increase in IA wages onto the budget. This is not for two new positions. However, our circuit breaker reimbursements that we've had for several years are going down. We're not going to be able to fully fund the existing wages that come off of circuit breaker currently in this fiscal year. So we are having to move two IAs off of circuit breaker and onto the general fund budget. Uh, also this year, we are looking at covering the full-time nurse leader position 100% from the five budgets, the four elementary schools and Frontier. Uh, that was grant funded. It was part-time and fully grant funded in the first year. We've slowly shifted it to full-time and it's still been some on the grant and some on the schools for the current year. Next year, it will be fully funded. It has to come off the grant, be fully funded by budget. So Frontier's portion of that position at full time is 27,000. That is an increase directly to the budget. We looked at the technology related expenses. This is primarily for uh, network expenses, such as uh, parent square and other means of communication that we use with uh, the community as well as curriculum software related needs. There are no new initiatives here. These accounts have been growing over several years. If you look back, we typically push them over budget 
I'm recommending that we budget for them properly moving forward because these expenses are not going away. So we're really just writing these accounts, you know, getting the money where it needs to be. Um, again, no new initiatives there. We're looking at a $30,000 increase to athletics. This is for salary and non-salary expenditures, and it's in part because of the new sports programming that we've added in the current year, uh, which in the current year we covered with savings from other lines. Like, for example, we had a ski coach um, budgeted, but we actually don't have to pay the ski coach because we're now in a co-op. So some of that money in FY22 has been absorbed, but in FY23, we actually have to add it in as a new expense in case those other expenditures do come back. Um, we can't just assume that that other money that we freed up this year will be there again. So that breakdown, I want to give you a little bit more detail about because this is a much higher increase than we usually see in athletics. Um, but we're looking at 4,000 for the expenditure. So that's for uniforms, equipment, supplies, materials. And then it's about $20,000 in salaries and wages for the coach expenses over those multiple programs, which I think we're at if volleyball gets put through tonight, I think we're at four or five new sports. Um, so that's a pretty significant increase to athletic salaries and wages. Uh, and then we're also looking at, um, we made an adjustment to some of our expenses. So uh, Carl Sear, the current athletic director, has looked historically back at what programs have been allocated and what they've spent. So Baseball, for example, was getting, say, $1,000, um, but basketball was only getting $500. And there wasn't really a rhyme or reason behind any of that. So he's making a recommendation that we allocate uh, a per player amount across every sport so that there's equity amongst male and female sports and equity amongst all of the sports, whether it's a more expensive sport or something that not a lot of kids play, it's based on the number of kids. So if track has 100 students playing and he allocates $40 a person, their expense is going to be 4,000. Whereas if tennis has 10 kids participating at $40, it's 400. Um, so we felt like that was a more equitable way to go into the sport <laughs> next year. So that does cause an increase of 4,500. Um, some accounts are actually going to go up, others are going to go down, and in that 4500 is also increased league fees that we're expecting for next year um, from MIAA. And then uh, we have our regular wages in there, you know, so our normal existing contracted wages, we have a placeholder in as well to help cover um, the increase for existing coaching positions. So I know that's a lot of detail, but I felt like that was an important one to explain since we don't normally see that much of an increase to athletics. Uh, special education transportation. So we are seeing almost a $35,000 increase to that line. We are seeing an increase to special education transportation district wide this current year. Um, I'm working with Karen Ferrandino, the special education director to find ways to cover the increase, but we are seeing our routes for special education transportation double in some places. So we are projecting right now that we're going to need about $35,000 more next year to cover our existing transportation routes for special ed education students. Our employee separation costs for sick buyback payouts due to retirements will increase 18,000 over the prior year. And our Franklin Regional Retirement Assessment is out already. They just released that last week. That is up $20,000 over the prior year. A really significant one is an increase in out-of-district placement for special education students. We're looking at an increase of $190,000 over the current year. Uh, we currently have, I believe, uh, $720,000 budgeted in FY22. We are going to exceed that. We have found a way, whether it's for grants or revolving funds, to cover the expenses for the current year where it's over. Um, but next year, we are looking at a, almost $200,000 increase just for that one line item. And then we have our contractual and non-contractual wage adjustments. So that accounts for... Um, placeholder because we're in negotiations with teachers and IAs, um, but we have included a number in there even though we're not done negotiating yet. And then uh, increases for anyone who's on a not a union contract, so our support staff and administrative team as well.
Um, so those are the major factors that are feeding into that $675,000 increase with this first draft of our budget. Um, I gave you a lot of data to look at in this report that I sent out. I, I'm not going to go over all of this here. I just wanted to explain um, the function codes here on this next page. So DESI asks us to report under certain functions, and they set up these function code groupings for us. Um, you can see here 1,000 is administration, which really covers superintendent, business office, and school committee. Um, 2,000 is anything educational related, so all of our teaching staff, um, principal's office, supplies and materials, anything that's directly student-driven for curriculum and instruction. 3,000 covers student services, um, which is uh, transportation, school lunch, uh, health office, so the nurse's office, uh, and athletics, uh, as well as student revolving, um, student activities accounts, not revolving. Uh, 4,000 is operations, so facilities and IT primarily fall under there. Benefits and insurance, self-explanatory, and then 9,000 is that out-of-district placement. Um, so you can see we're going from, I'm sorry, 790, I think I said 720, 790 in the current year to 980 next year. So that is the most significant increase to our budget next year. The rest of them are, are falling generally in alignment from prior years. Um, student services is up because of that nursing position that I talked about, that nurse district leader, uh, that's inflating that amount there. Um, one thing I do want to note is that the increase you'll see to operations is only 0.48, and that is partially because a good part of our facilities and operations and IT is funded five ways because of the cost share percentage. Frontier's cost share percentage is actually going down for next year because enrollment is down and the elementary school, some of their enrollment is up. So it's causing Frontier's to decrease. So if that wasn't happening, this number would actually be slightly higher. Um, that always fluctuates a little bit year to year. This year it, for 23, um, it happens to be a pretty significant number. I also gave you information on uh, salary analysis increases. So of our total increase, 52.77% of that is related to salaries and wages, and the remaining 47.23% is non-salary expenditures. And then I gave you the breakdown of uh, by category, those categories that I mentioned above, those salaries and wages, how each of them were increasing. Uh, historical data was also provided for you to look at what the increases were year to year. You can see historically, at least the past few, we've been over 3% for an increase uh, with the exception of FY21, that was a 0% last year, just shy of 3%. And then there's some important enrollment data to look at here. You can see clearly that our enrollment is declining. Um, part of this is due to the pandemic. You know, we did lose quite a few students to homeschooling or, or other options. Um, we're hoping that that number will increase moving forward, but we are seeing a pretty significant decline in enrollment. Um, just a couple of other notes. Uh, I talked about that cost share percentage already. We're seeing a reduction by 2.68%, which is a significant reduction. Um, and then I did want to point out that our health insurance rates are not in yet. I did not add any additional funding. Normally I would do a three to a three and a half percent COLA adjustment under insurances. But when we built last year's budget, it was before rates were done. We already had in a 3.5% increase and rates actually stayed steady. So we have savings in 22 that we can either recoup to help cover this um, an increase for next year if the rates do come out higher or um, we've already got that three and a half built in from, you know, a, a prior couple of years. So I didn't feel like we needed to add any additional funds there, but that's usually one of those accounts that we're eh, not quite sure what's going to happen. Um, so a lot of information presented and I'm happy to take questions or if you have questions specific for George about any of the new initiatives, uh, I'm sure he'd be happy to jump in and help me out there too. So I think part of this is just to let you folks know is that we, we're trying to be transparent in the whole pro process. Many times we could, um, with a, a number that's a little bit, you know, where it's at now, we know it's probably not going to be acceptable by all the towns, um, unless you guys want to make it acceptable. Um, so, you know, we just, we try to show you where we are at with our wants and needs, 
prior to us cutting things back, we know we're probably going to go back to the drawing board and come back with a revised um, second round edition. But I, I really think it's important that you see where um, the administration is thinking and um, different things are being uh, moved around pre-game, so to speak. Um, so that's why you're seeing some of those things that, you know, you say, well, that you know, that that, that particular thing is not going to fly. Well, we may know that, but we also are talking about what we're getting, hearing from administration for their needs are and such. So just want to go on. Someone must have a question. Come on. There we go. Uh, for the sake of understanding, I, I have two questions. One is, uh, why just one English teacher as opposed to te uh, an additional teacher in, in any of the other departments? So currently at the high school, and so just, just for a, a historical perspective, we actually had asked for uh, an additional English teacher uh, in the budget a couple of years ago, uh, and it was approved, and we were in the final stages. We were about to pull the trigger, and then COVID happened, and all of that went away. So we actually had somebody on the hook to come and join our, our English department. Uh, I had to call them and tell them that the position had been canceled. Um, and so we currently have four uh, at, at the high school level, we have four, in terms of each of the departments, we have four um, teachers in each of the departments except for English. We have three. And so what we've been, we've been operating under, uh, we've been sort of cobbling together. Um, we've been using other teachers um, to teach English. Uh, so right now uh, in uh, our 11th grade, uh, we have special ed teachers who are teaching English. We have uh, a foreign language teacher who is teaching English. Uh, and so we're we're looking to create some parity there. Uh, we're looking to we're looking to basically we want to we want to create um, parity within the department. So it's so it's so it's on on par with the others. That's that's why. Um, are you gonna you gonna get the same person who was going to be coming in, or or is it gonna be? Something? You know something I had, I had I I I thought about it. Uh, I but that's something I really would want to discuss with the English department. Um, and uh, and and what because they're still at the they're still at the same school that they were at when they applied for the position, um, so I, they might still be they might still consider coming. Okay, and then uh, the, the, the it looks I mean the big nut looks like the the out of district placements and there's really it's, there's no wheel room there. But the only other thing that jumps out for me would be the uh, the nurse leader position. Was that a uh, a grant funded position in response to COVID? And I mean, so if we're so that was prior to COVID. We got we got lucky. We got lucky in this. We did expand it to a full time position. Um, the grant that we got was for the pay. We slowly had to come off the funding of it, um, and that's where Meg Birch was. But we moved her to a full time position the year the pandemic hit because we needed to pull. You know, we needed her. Um, so it was. We were fortunate to have it being paid for at that point. At this point, you know, the, the grant, you know, said that we were going to be doing 50% uh, of it, right, Shelly? Um, but we, we increased it to full time. Right now, I can't see going back to a part time nurse leader given we're still in the pandemic. If the pandemic was to fizzle out and be gone by the end of the month, which we're all hoping <laughs> for, um, you know, then we could relook at that position. But right now, I don't think we could survive without a full leader, nurse leader position. Thank you. Those are my questions. Can, can I ask a question? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so I wanted to find out. We currently have two LP. Well, we had two LPNs, and I wanted to. And I know that I had put that as a reduction because we were not going to. We're not going to require two LPNs for next year, and I had put that as a reduction in the budget. But then I. But then it's my understanding that that might have been coming out of circuit breaker. That 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 money. I'm not sure. So I mean, no. so I just wanted to find out if there would if that if that would be able any help whatsoever. Yeah, so I've already taken that into consideration. They were not paid from Circuit Breaker. The um, it they may have been at one point, but you know we've sort of moved things around. So that fifty four thousand for their two salaries has already been taken off and is factored into the five point seven two percent. Thank you. I wish it wasn't because that would be nice to come up with an extra 54,000, but yeah. You know, and as Keith said, the, the biggest one here is the out of district placement. I mean, that really, 
really hurts to have to take a almost 2% hit just from that, but there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Um, and that would be one of the first things that I would recommend we figure out, if not how to fully fund from another funding source, at least partially fund from another funding source. Um, it's a good use of revolving funds for these potential one-time expenses. You know, I'm not sure what age all of these children are or, or students are, but it might be someone that it's a one year out of district placement um, that we could see a reduction in the next year. So, you know, I would definitely be encouraging us to look at those funds first. Um, I would also be encouraging us to keep that English teacher position in as long as we possibly can, that that be one of the last things that we consider cutting. Um, you know, and then we have some other options to consider too. There's some expense lines that historically have been over their actuals, but we don't necessarily reduce because we keep those funds as placeholders. Um, you know, an example of that is our heat and our utilities. You know, there's typically a COLA adjustment for those types of expenses because you don't always know what's going to happen with utilities. And, you know, I think we're at a point where we could make some reductions there that might save us you know, between a few different lines, maybe a half of a percent, which isn't a whole lot, but it all adds up in the end. Um, you know, and then we look at other things like, can we move the additional special education transportation expense to the special education revolving fund? Um, you know, and that does require making sure that we have enough revenue to cover existing expenses before we add on, but that's another option as well. Um, and then considering those other two asks, you know, another IA and another building monitor, you know, I really would ask for George support to, to argue the importance of those positions. But if we did eliminate those two pieces off, you know, at almost 45,000, you know, you're close to another half of a percent. So um, I, I guess my point in saying that is there's a lot, there, there's some opportunity for us to bring this number down relatively quickly, but like Darius said, we wanted to show you transparently what it would look like if every need and want was thrown in. Well, I think, and I think it makes sense for us to see that too. So was there an OPEB contribution in your wish list? Not even in your wish list. No. So, so so is this, what, what is this, year three in a row before, without an OPEB contribution? I mean, at least year three that I, since I've been here, so. So how many, how many years will the auditors let that go? I mean, last, last time this snuck up on us, the auditors came in and said, you need to, you need to come up with 50 grand this year. And I remember that being a hardship. That was, that was a number of years ago, but. Um, I just. I I, I, don't, I, I understand that's the, the auditor that's too dumb. I understand so. the importance of funding OPEB and uh, think we need to continue talking about it. I also think it's hard to talk about the reality of being able to do that when our roof needs to be replaced and it's going to cost us $4 million. So, you know, it's a little bit hard to balance all of those pieces. So, you know, I know probably didn't set enough time for this meeting, um, but we do need to go into the next session. You guys need to decide what you want to bring to the next session or put it on hold until we have a more refined number um, as well. So you need to talk about that briefly here. And then maybe we'll, we'll make sure the next meeting we have at least 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, so we could do work behind the scenes, you know, to do some of the things that I just recommended and bring this down and present a lower number to school committee next month. Um, or we could talk about some of this tonight with school committee. Bill, I think last year you decided, you know, let's just hold off until we have a firmer number. So, you know, we're happy to follow your lead. Yeah, I think I think that's the uh, Darius and I talked about that this afternoon. I think that's the most intelligent thing for us to do whether we want to meet again as a, as a subcommittee before the regular meeting and look to see what you guys have come up with because I don't want to be I, you know if I had to spring that on them tonight I'd rather the next time I'd rather have a day or two to think about it so if the, if the four of us can meet again and see what you've got in mind 
and then at least have a thought process put in place before we sit down with a regular committee. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know what would be given to them next time either. Maybe we're not there yet. We're early enough in this process, time wise. So we have the time to do this, but we probably can't wait until February for this committee to meet again. Yeah. So I think two things. One is our, our not in stone deadline is March first. That's our our March um, school committee meeting, and that will give us a few days prior to that forty five day, so we can have our public hearing on the budget on March first. Um, I think it's March first. And the other one is the we don't have the governor's budget yet, so this doesn't mean anything to any assessments of the town. So it's really hard to start throwing the, that initial number out when we don't know how it affects the towns. Um, and then, you know, has us re kind of redo the whole budget between then and there. So why don't I try to set up a meeting for this committee prior to looking back at my other calendar. Um, so Frontier meets on the 8th. Maybe we do that first week in February. Um, that'll give us a week to kind of play with any decisions you come out of that before the Frontier meeting. Yep, makes um, sense. If so we can see that a doodle with the, when, when you guys can do that. Yeah, if we can see that so stuff a couple days ahead of time, you know, I don't want to put the pressure on you guys, but if we have a little time to look at it before, before <laughs> we get together, and then we'll have a week to think about it before we have to give it to everybody we're, else. We're steps along in the, you know, we created that, and the first thing we do is then we start talking about how do we get this number to a number where they're going to want to see it. So we already have a draft of the different avenues we can take. So Oh, yeah, I'm sure you do. Make that happen, so. Everybody okay with that? <clears throat> yeah, that's my preference as well. So good. Okay. We've got to change to another venue, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. Second. Everybody, Everybody. in favor of going yeah. on to yes. the next adventure? Yes. Okey dokey. See you on the other side. <laughs>